<laughs> oh my gosh. I'll wait for you guys to chat. <clears throat> So I'm not going to go too much into um, my biases, uh, my opinions. I just want to say that it was a hot mess on both sides. <laughs> we can all agree. It was, uh, the thing about it was there's great psychology when somebody is talking with an object and Trust me, I'm a person who knows body language very well. I am a dance teacher. But when someone's talking and they have something, you kind of sort of don't pay much attention to what they're saying, but it looks more it looks more active and it looks more important because I have something in my hand. So I was like, ooh, Joe Biden, that was a good psychological tactic to use an object because motion... It creates more endorphin activity in your brain, if you didn't know that. This is also why actors, when they do something, a lot of times on very key lines that actors deliver, you'll see them blink their eyes. Tyra Banks does this too when she's delegating different things for America's Next Top Model. The, it, 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 there's a record button in your mind. So I want to get into um, the Paris Summit and... Uh, climate change, global warming, because I think a lot of people are very confused about the, the thing is you have to do research outside of the box. And this is why many people say conspiracy theory, because the scientists aren't really saying what's going on. But I have let's just do let's just go over global warming, climate change. And the truth is so. My whole perspective is there are these towers that every major city along the coast has. They're water vapor towers, like so. And so the only point that I'll, I'll direct this to the debate, but when they asked, you know, how would you change global warming? The greenhouse effect is it's not really greenhouse effect because you don't have plants. You have power plants. You have emissions going to the air. This is what's destroying the ozone. This is what's causing us to <clears throat> clear our throats a lot. And these water vapor towers are creating uh, the water that has chlorine in our tap. So to, to Trump's point, when he talked about clean water, clean uh, air, this is what he was talking about. And I'm not defending him. I'm defending the, the, the perspective. Oh, I've done my homework, shoot. Biden didn't address this at all. He was like, it's it's amount of humans. I'm like, well, you can't stop humans from farting, sir. <laughs> but people don't know about these water vapor towers because they they there's a video where they uh, show that it creates rain. And these things, if they're out of control, they create the hurricanes. I agree it was a pathetic debate. It was so pathetic. I had a panic attack. <laughs> um, I want to show you guys also this is also ties to the Paris Summit the Paris Summit wants to have more power plants wants to have more uh, water vapor emissions towers they, they, they go for this this is why Trump pulled this out because you can't artificially make water you can't recycle water and distill it and put it back into our kitchens and bathrooms that ain't going to be healthy it's like trying to clean the poop out of toilet water and recycle it and then put it back into what's coming into our kitchen, right? So that's the truth. And a lot of people who who deny Trump will also deny the truth of what he said. That's the unfortunate thing about it is when something's built on someone's character or personality, and yes, he did it to himself too. Um, it is what it is. But when you're a celebrity and you're in a Hollywood, you know, reality show driven world, 
you have to create drama. You have to stir up the pot. You have to make people don't like, if people don't like you, it actually has people pay more attention to you. Like Kim Kardashian, she made a sex tape. Everyone was so against her. Like, beautiful girl with her boyfriend, why y'all mad? Now she's popular and you guys still hate her. Why? <laughs> and then people get mad because, you know, she's she has a track record dating black men, but she's not white. So we have that perception that, uh, you know, white America and this whole perception of rich white people, you know, we need to stop doing that. I said that yesterday, the white label needs to go away. So um, I'll put this in my description or my comment box uh, below about the water vapor towers because it's very important that people understand global warming and climate change have a lot to do. See, when they say climate change, um, Obama said this straightforward. It's not what exactly it is. And it, it means... Let's just put it out there. It means new world, new world order. We all know the new world order. And democracy has been about pushing a new world order. We need a reset. We need, we need something to change everything. We need to wipe out. So the more that there are Republicans in office, the more that you have Republican-sided uh, presidents, this new world order can never go forward. So that's behind the scenes of everything. It's not a conspiracy theory. If you Google search it, it's all... You're voting for the cowboy in the hat. <laughs> Who was that? Um, I rather have. <laughs> I rather have Castro. <laughs> um, I'll tell you guys this. Don't get mad at me and don't get off the live stream because I really like everyone's comments. But Trump had a lot of points, valid points, things that if you were to. Google search them, exactly what he said, you will find the exact result of what happened, the time, the date. And his his, his points to the years, 1929, I was like, boop. You know, I, he had some points, but the moderator, I don't like him, period, anyway. I don't like the way he talks. That's just my biased opinion. But he's a Democrat. The moderator is a Democrat. And he has his own show where he's constantly trying to derive his own perspective against the Republic. So long story short, of course, his questions will kind of contradict Trump and sort of boost Biden. And I think that's the way it was organized. I would say that it was better for Biden to have people on democracy side as a moderator to, to give him a leverage to say enough because he really didn't know what he was saying. He didn't know what he was saying. What you laughing at, Arnufo? Where are your facts, sir? <laughs> P.S. Our vote doesn't mean anything, to be honest with you guys. It, it's a selection. If you guys know it goes on behind closed doors, it's a selection. The three debates give the powers that be behind closed doors, like Wizard of Oz. They decide who is the better salesman. America is the car. Long story short. Um... Basically, um, it just gives us a feeling of participation. This is how you, we were able to solve the color crisis and the um, racism from the 19, what, 30s, 40s, 50s, when you had blacks who couldn't vote and they got hosed down and tormented to not cast their vote. Actually, black Republicans were the ones who were more... Um, uh, 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 kept from the voting ballots. That's why they said no colors allowed because there was more people of color than, you know, Caucasians and white folks. So if you had more black folks who were slaves of Republicans back then in the slave slavery, master slave days, guess what? The slaves are going to be Republican. <laughs> if you worked for someone of a particular side, you voted for their side. So it, it's been a, a it's been a civil war from the very beginning. A lot of people think, oh, well, Trump's racist, this and that. It's not even about that. It's not. It's not about that. It's really about how ethically are you able to maintain running something that has been running for 100 years? 400 years? 500 years? What kind they say? 500 years? We only had presidents for 100 years, haven't we? I forget.
But um, Biden, I got pissed because he kept using African Americans and black boy. He see, and that's where people who can't think for themselves are going to get tricked because. Every time we say black, we think, oh my gosh, black people went through it so badly this year in 2020. We're going to feel the sympathy card. And that's why I've been saying, if you're not black and you're speaking on behalf of our, our 2020 experience, zip it. If you are black and you are speaking on behalf of the 2020 experience, speak your mind. Because that's going to reveal the truth. And blacks are not, African Americans were not victims. Thank you. He did the victim. Woe is me. Yes, he did. And I was upset about that. I was upset on both of them. I was mad that Trump could not acknowledge white supremacy. I know why. I know why. And it's sad. I under, This is me understanding, not that I agree. Okay? You have a world that's ran by a, a group of people. They, they, they are a group. They have a, a lodge in Europe and they have 33 degrees. And when they achieve a level of success, currency, wealth, you know, uh, an offspring, they graduate to, to where Trump is now. So that's just the background of how he got to where he is. Biden got to where he was uh, through Zionism. Zionism is opposite of Freemasonry. So if you guys understand the two, you got to do your homework because I can't tell you. It's not Illuminati. <laughs> it's almost like when you go to college, you have your alpha, beta, delta, right? Your, your alphas and your deltas, your fraternity groups and sorority groups. That's the beginning stages of these lodges of people. That's the first degree. And then the pranks that they pull on each other is the second degree. Let's say Ariana Grande and her song about seven rings. Is it about the planets and the universe and Saturn seven rings? No, it's really about the level of success, wealth, money, power. You you gain seven rings in order to have influence. So that's a little secret behind closed doors. Now, if you want to play the game, you got to abide by the rules and the contract or agreements, which is why they have agencies and managers. They will tell you it's in the clause of the contract that they have to be controversial, they have to be appealing, they have to be, uh, you know, the narrative. They have to follow a narrative. But in our universal conscious awareness, we have to stop trying to cater to the storyline because it's not a real storyline. It's a narrative. Everything's a narrative. But it's for us to go, wow, these people who are creating this narrative actually have personal lives where they're doing something different kind of like me as a dance teacher that's just a that's an authentic facade but i'm not a dance teacher 24 7 behind closed doors i'm a human being who has transparency and vulnerability i have issues too i have issues i i always tell people i i kind of see a little bit of myself in trump i really do because uh sharina's in the house she knows when i ran my dance group there were times where I snapped on everybody for no reason. There were times where I stirred the pot for no reason. I knew how to keep people involved because I, I knew controversy and drama. <laughs> but also I had talent. I had ethics and I took care of people, right? And I brought too many dates into our rehearsals. And, you know, everybody went through all of my crap and they were mad. And essentially people walked out because I did not pay attention to their needs. So here we are in a global crisis. And I asked people who are watching the live stream, why would you select a new president or a new elect in the situation where we have a pandemic? We have um, a virus. So the virus is not the pandemic. The pandemic is the shutdown of the economy. <laughs> then you have the virus control. What is happening? So you already have an administration with information and details. Why would you want to wipe the slate clean and start over? That's my only defense that I'm saying is it's best to just stick with the crazy that's going on now and go with crazy man number one because, it, you know, it, just let it roll out. <laughs> Because starting over is not going to help. You know, it's only going to make things worse. 
But yeah, but going back to uh, me and the dance group, I already know what it's like to be a bad, a bad leader with great ethics. You know, I did not how to manage a, a company. I didn't know. But you guys saw the videos I posted today where my group was, we were on point. Didn't look like we had drama at all. But I just didn't know how to have self-management abilities during that time that I had the greatest success of a dance company. It just what it is. Same as a, a, a guy who didn't like the way the economy was going, paid some money to run his own campaign and became a president within a year. I, I believe that there's some hope in that kind of scenario. You can get mad at me if you want. I really don't care. But I think there's hope in things that when someone is a regular person, a messed up person, let's say ain't perfect, but pays their own money to get into a position to change things because they're not working out. And the last, the eight years before 2017 were pretty awful. Hurricane Katrina, nothing happened. Earthquake in Haiti, nothing happened. And Biden was the vice president <laughs> during that time. And, and also too, I think, to go against what Biden said, I'm a flip side. Um, they talked about his, his uh, opinion towards the, uh, the Democratic states that were affected by Antifa. And he said, well, I'm not in charge. I'm not, you know, a presidential figure. I'm, I'm just a candidate elect. And it's like, dude, your platform is very strong. Same as um, Bernie Sanders. I said the same thing. Why do they stop talking when, uh, when their shine is not there anymore? So what? You conceded your vote, uh, Bernie Sanders, but your platform is so strong he could have had a talk show. His talk show would have been on point. He could have had a podcast, a, a college, you know. There, I have so many resources what people can do. If Bernie Sanders had a, uh, a, a free college podcast for all college. Imagine going in pandemic mode right now and then, you know, all. This, so he, he gave up too early. I will say it, the interruptions were annoying, but I think to, to I'm going to take both sides to Biden's point in interrupting. Um, he was talking too low, but he was thinking and I give him props for thinking because I know what it's like when you have automatic distorted thinking and you have anger management tucked away in your past and you try not to snap and this biatch is coming. Ooh, I saw it in Biden. I'm like, ooh, don't do it, Biden. If you want to, if you want to get the black vote as you planting your seeds in the plantations, Mr. Biden. Rude. Right? I was like, shut your mouth. Don't say he been I say black one more time. But to his to his uh um defense, uh I think people who have trouble with public speaking ability, and this is why I do my live streams. I try to work on my public speaking skills because if I get a job, I can just freestyle the information that I know, right? And so I, I kind of felt bad for Biden. And, and there's been a lot of comments, Sleepy Joe and his medication. I'm like, hey, y'all, up, up, up. You know, I, I'm, I'm an advocate for mental health. You know, people don't think that I have mental illness, but I do. I do. I have, I've kept so much trauma in and then I think when I thought I got over it, what happened was it came out when my unfortunate events started happening, you know, from last September to now. So I'm reading a comment that says, um, <laughs> this debate was definitely an embarrassment to the United States of America. You know, pretty much it was an embarrassment to the universe. I bet the aliens on Mars were like, ooh, we about to invade that, that planet. Let's keep moving on. Let's go to Venus. <laughs> um, I think to Trump's defense, I just thought it wasn't fair that his points were being uh, blocked. They, like he was he was stating different things, even though he was interrupting. He was saying, if you look at the date, 1943, oh, you know, I'm that person where. I will want to hit you in the head because you stopping me from having a point. And, I, and I've said this on, on Facebook a lot. A lot of people, I would say something, and some of you are very uh, uh, opinionated, but a lot of folks witness on my timeline, 
I'll say something and it's just the information. I didn't pick a side. I'm just reciting the information. And you'll see everybody go, I don't like your face, Eric. Not literally, but, you know, they would attack my character and chastise my personality over delivery of information. So let's look up Hunter Biden. Because that was juicy. Ooh. And Biden said Hunter did not get booted out of the military. So let's look up because I want to catch that mother Tucker in a lie. Hunter Biden um, kicked out of military. Let's see if that works. Oh, look, 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 look. Boom. Look at that. Navy kicks out Biden's son. And this is the New York Post. It's a valid source. October 2014. Mm-hmm. Kicked out for failing a Coke test. Biden, you lied. But Hunter's hot, though. Mm -hmm. I ain't judging you. Just don't do it in my house. <laughs> Boom. But, you know, who was... Uh, it's really not Hunter's fault. I say we blame where the money comes from. Right? Mm. Mm. Hunter's hot, though. All right, so I don't feel bad at all. Yes, I know he may have issues. I think it was not handled at all to me. It's no excuses. Being blocked to not having a great skill set of public speaking. That's true. It's almost like, um, I'm going to heart you. Boom. It's almost like saying uh, you spent all of your adulthood trying to get to this point. Now's not the time for you to be backpedaling and saying, but, 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 you know, I need to work on my public speaking ability. And even like being old as both of them are. <laughs> but that's what I try to get to the, the point is to a lot of people is it's really not about running the country, running uh, the governments, the music industry, entertainment, movies, uh, networks. It's not about being a good person. It's about um, the pitch. If you can pitch something that works to the powers that be. And, and you guys already know, like, if you go, yes, Christina. Hi, Christina. It was it was dead on. Trump was on point. But the fact that Trump has been kind of rude through Twitter, <laughs> I think it's funny, though. I love some shade. I, I'm just a petty person like that. I love shady people. I don't like phony, and I don't like fake, and I don't like um, the B word. When, you know, when you call someone a B-word. I don't like people being a B-word. Or as Diddy would say, a B-ass. Don't be a B-ass. I just, I see a lot of B-assness. <laughs> I think um, when, when Trump was speaking, when it was his turn, it was very well articulated. Because a lot of the things that came out were dates and timelines of historical events where you can actually look them up. I was like, all right, point, sir. The fact that he lost his cool every time there was an accusation about his own, the, I, can, I can admit that when someone's guilty of something, like, it, like the taxes situation, now I'm not saying that's okay. But, you know, you know, he's guilty about not reporting his taxes. But it's only like out of three years, three years of not reporting your taxes. You know, I have relatives that are still paying on their taxes. If you owed a lot of money to the IRS and, you you know, if you guys handled money, I took finance, uh, business finance in college for my business administration degree. And... Um, I know that finance is a hard, it's hard. Finance is hard. Like if you have to balance your budget and you've got X amount of companies going, yeah, it's your own fault. You didn't balance your budget. You overspent. You, you got caught up in the pettiness of being big and bold, but you probably didn't know 10 years later you're going to be president. So his fault, his accountability. Um, but, then, but when he spoke, when it was his turn, it was articulate. He owes a ton of money, but at the same time, um, look how much net worth he gained from his hotels, his hotel chain, 
et cetera, et cetera. And then you have children to take care of. And then you have grandchildren to take care of and, and alimony to your ex-wife. So I'm not saying feel sorry for him. I'm just pointing, at, pointing out that when we are old and we go through the same thing, don't be complaining. <laughs> um, on the tax issue, everybody is supported miscellaneous on their taxes. You guys put your, your new shoes, guilty. You've put your phone bill. Everyone's reported miscellaneous. So we all cheated on our taxes at one point. Allegedly. Allegedly. I, I didn't cheat. Y'all did. <laughs> no, but our, our, our expenses for what we need for our businesses, you know. But to... Don't get mad at me, you guys, and don't leave the live. But to Trump's advantage, his salary as a president... Is not going into his pocket. I think there is guilt remorse, if there is, a, a, like a 0.5% of it, it's going back into the economy. It's going, and I think his, if I'm not mistaken, uh, there was a press conference this morning where his press secretary said that his salary goes to those who are still unemployed right now from the pandemic. And it was able, it, it's able enough to be sorted out of how much those people are gonna get. So if they were getting, let's say, 400 bucks on their unemployment because they were unemployed, then the pandemic started, it's going to continue to pay them the amount that they were getting paid. So there is some accountability going on, but it's behind closed doors. It's not going to be on CNN. You know what I mean? So I think like us as an audience have to be fair. We can't just say, oh, he's an asshole. Period. You can't do that. Like you can't live your life, like even though Joe Biden is an asshole, <laughs> I can't I can't say that he is. I could just say his actions are very dumb ass like. They're very dumb ass like. Using the black community all year long, like his first destination this year was the Crenshaw District, when he did his campaign, and I'm like, dude, why are you making soul food in the springtime in the Crenshaw District? Really, dog? Really? And then he calls people like me not black enough because I lean more conservative. I always tell people I worked for a right wing. I worked for three white right wing companies. I worked for Home Depot. That's Republican mindset. You got to know how to strategize selling something to consumers. That is that is consumer value. You are an asset to a consumer value when you learn how to sell a sales associate. So when they do a background check on your, on your um, let's say you apply for AT&T. That's more of a Green Party-like, let's just use that as an example, a Green Party-like company. It's, it's mutual, mutual ground. So if your last job was Chick-fil-A, that's Re Republican, right? Republican Mormon? Republican and Mormon? <laughs> um, in and out Burger? That's also Republican, right? So if you apply at and and they see those two jobs, they're going to say, nope, they ain't going to get along with uh, our associates. But if you worked at, let's say, uh, Yogurt Land, and then you apply for at and you guys don't know this, but that's what they do in HR. How do I know? Because I was training to be a manager last year. Yes. And so management, they, <laughs> what I was told, the secret was, you're not hiring people based on performance. You're basing it on appeal. You're basing your employees on appeal. So anyways, um, I wanted to do a little dirt. Do you guys know about Joe Biden and his touchiness? YouTube, you better work. Do you guys know about it? So you guys who are voting for Joe Biden, just make sure... <laughs> You know what I'm about to play right now. <laughs> oh my gosh. I I hate doing this, but at the same time. Um uh, okay, let's see. Touchy Joe. T touchy Joe. Honey is special because it's really a story of place. I love honey. The honeybees, they're telling you a story of where they... Next. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi today advised former Vice President Joe Biden to keep his distance <laughs> after two women accused him of touching them inappropriately. Nancy Cordes spoke with congressional Democrats. 
It is a big part of who he is, that he hugs people and connects with people and talks to people. Delaware Senator oh, Chris shut up. came to his mentor's defense. We need some drama. Hold on. Oh, do you see this when he hugged Hillary? There are hugs where you just throw up your arms and go for it. This is funny. And then there are hugs that keep going and going and going. Joe Biden wouldn't let Hillary go as they met on the tarmac at Scranton Airport. About four seconds into the hug, they semi disengage. <laughs> Nothing to see here, right? Wrong. Because the vice president wouldn't unhand Hillary for almost 16 seconds. Oh, God. Notice how many times she tries to tap out. She lets it go, he does not. <laughs> That's what she gets. <laughs> Ugh. Yeah. Thank you all for your patience. Ugh. Yeah. Coronavirus. Okay, maybe he's just being friendly. We get it. Old men are perverts. Like this old man today, he was like maybe 50 years old, black dude. I was walking from the store and he was like, nice. And I was like, rude, mind your business. <laughs> Insulting people's intelligence, saying they are not smart, also not right. I see how... Let me read your comment. Hold on. I know the feeling because people put me down constantly when we need to be mindful of people's feelings. True. I actually said that... Um, I said that earlier in my live stream that I think it, it is unfair when people um, talk about someone's mentality, their mental, their mental process, because I always just say like, but at the same time, in the, in the statement I'm saying, it's also unfair to put yourself in situations where you know you're going to be heavily criticized. You know you're going to be heavily judged. So like if I know, I, like let's say for example, there is a party that I was invited to go to this past weekend and the weekend before. And I didn't go because I have been so on edge, nervous this whole year. I've been on edge. I've been used to being around people for a long time. Then to go from, what, 30 people, a class, three times a day, six days a week, to like, oh, I'm by myself? This whole pandemic? Oh, I'm alone? <laughs> and, and my betta fish? So the next time I go around big groups of people, I'm really like, ing -ing. it's just the way the human biology, it's just the way the mind goes. The nerves are there and the endorphins are not producing. This is why I keep suggesting uh, we laugh while we're sitting around doing nothing or working from home or whatnot. But yeah, I was soon, I copped out because if I act weird in front of people and I have been made fun of recently because I act weird around people and it sucks. It sucks when you know you have a mental setback. No matter how beautiful you are, people have issues. We all have issues. And I think that's the thing that we have to acknowledge is we're not looking for a great person to be our forefront of our country. You guys are the forefront of our country. You are the co-creators of, of our reality. And by saying, like some people were saying, oh, I don't like dump. You being that angry at some man that you don't know, but you don't have no right to call him dump or duck face or orange or duck lips. You have no right to be saying that. Because when you project the image of what you dislike about someone in a public you know, platform, it only creates more disruption, negative frequency, and white noise. This is why I keep telling people all the time and they don't like it. I always say, stop making fun of Trump. If you stop making fun of him, maybe you can actually hear the words that he's saying. Some people didn't like that. Ooh, oh well, I said it. 
Because those are the same people who don't listen. They're the same people when your parents disciplined you, you didn't want to listen. Your mom popped you in the mouth. She whooped your ass. <laughs> Where's my belt? This is why I never got whooped. I remember one time, though, my mom's going to kill me for this. One time I was mean to my best friend, Tommy. Because he was being like all up in my mom's. He was trying to like take my place when I was 10 years old. So I, I, I opened the door and I, I let it go so it could hit Tommy on purpose. He wasn't paying attention. My mom saw it. She sucker punched me in the stomach. I will never forget that day. And I will never be rude to anybody in front of my mama, period. If the things that you say to people in public, you should be able to say in front of your mom without her making a face. That Those are the, 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 the ingredients of a ethical individual, uh, the ingredients to a professional person who knows how to compose himself. And it's the best recipe for social competence. Because I see people just going off. I'm like, you guys, you look so bad. Because if your employer's following you on Facebook and you're talking SHIT about somebody, you know, I lay out facts about Mr. Biden. I don't like the fact that I, I, have, I can Google search Biden, put his hands on children, you know, and I can find it. And it's there. And people are like, oh, you know, it, no, 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 there's no excuses for that. That's where I have, it's a category of something that is of a very vulnerable subject. And there's evidence and facts to it that no, no adult stranger should be putting his hands on a, on a child that he doesn't know, period. If it's, if it's your nephew or niece, I understand. Maybe not in 2020, but yeah. Yay, I'm still here. <laughs> Facebook, you tried it. Facebook, you tried it. How dare you? This is free speech. They they probably don't. See, that's the thing. That's proof that you guys don't like people talking about the JB word. Really, his name should be BJ. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Being my human self. Anyways, to wrap this up, all I'm trying to say in general Facebook. Ooh, Victoria, you missed it. Facebook cut me off because I was talking trash. <laughs> so basically, all I'm saying in general is we have to play fair when it comes to uh, entertainment. And I think social, uh, social, e economical, all those things that we see that are projected on television, that's entertainment. You got to be an audience member watching a performance. And, and every performance is going to be great. You know, everyone's going to be a critic towards some performance. And, and I think the more that people side on one side and then create this ideology that there's someone against them, that there's a Hitler in the making behind someone, that's all in your mind. Because you're just in, in, in a perfect world wanting something awful to happen so that you can be right. <laughs> So I think we have to stop trying to find the correctness in a group of people who are entitled to saying one thing. Because there's a lot of people who are saying one thing. It's not fair to deem someone racist when you haven't witnessed them put their hands on uh, someone of an ethnic background who they don't like. And, and stop using racist. Racist is when you really express what you don't like about someone and you demean and put them down as a human being, you put your hands on them. That means you're trying to take them out. So, I, and, and I, I believe it's true. Um, it, it, to a degree, what, what Trump said about um, what is being said is really what is being said. But people are not seeing that these things are not performed or done in person. They're just being said. Um, Lady Gaga is a great artist at saying something repeatedly and people can, like her, all of her, most of her songs, they repeat itself. She's used that algorithm so much and people who understand like uh, hermetics and um, ancient Egyptian uh, uh, mythology, mathematics, uh, people who do math or compose music, you, you know that when things repeat itself, 
simultaneously, the, the mind triggers memory cells. That's how you get people to remember stuff. Um, so Lady Gaga, Poker Face, blah, 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 blah. you know the song. <laughs> rah, 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 rah. Bad romance. Hey. See some more people coming in to live stream. If you, if you were here when I started the live stream, I kind of went black for two minutes. Social media was trying to check me for uh, saying a particular man's name that starts with a J. Because uh, Facebook is a liberal driven, <laughs> it's liberal driven, electrical, artificial intelligent simulator that collects data on us. And oh my gosh, tomorrow's the day where we can't really talk that much about particular people in general because they'll start taking down our profiles. Oh, yes. So if you guys uh, want to talk about heavy topics, I would suggest you, you keep your own words without links to pages or screenshot stuff that have, um, you know, your uh, your 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 sources yeah tomorrow is the big day tomorrow's october 1st right <laughs> no that's uh thursday my bad yeah they, so i'm like uh oh because some people know i have a group i have a group called red pill society and i love this group because we're all like a bunch of investigators we're trying to like dig for the root of the economy's issues and, and the uproot of what is causing the problems in our society. And it's a very great eclectic group of all kinds of people who never ever had disagreed or argued. And it's a hundred people in a group. I'm very proud of my, my red pill group. And uh, the, the, I, <laughs> yes, hi Jesse, yes, hi. So red pill uh, came from the matrix if you guys don't know the Matrix, um, Neo, long story short, he's his normal guy. Something happened and he, he caught on to it. He wanted to know more information. Um, and so he was told, hey, you're in a simulation. Now, if you want to know more about where you live, take the red pill. If you want to stay your normal life, like some of you are, you know, doctors, veterinarians or you work at Burger King, Starbucks, like you're blue pill people. <laughs> but I think people who are like educators and artists and, and entertainers, you kind of sign up for a lot that you didn't ask for. And I think now's the time where people are learning how to compose themselves in these paradigms where everything is, uh, everything is colliding into one timeline. So if you are someone who is a zoologist, someone who is an archaeologist, someone is a, a, you know, a physician, all these timelines are merging into one where everybody has to go into one thought process. And I think that's why the debates are very important. And it's very key to understand that it was probably intentionally messed up on purpose so that everyone get on one page. And that is a good recipe of bringing us back as a country. Because everybody's messed up. <laughs> everybody's a hot mess. We can all agree everyone's a hot mess. Um, yes, counselors, mental health. But mental health professionals, I would say that they probably have it the worst because the accountability on their shoulders. And knowing the dirty deeds of everything in the world. Because there's a lot of stuff people don't know about. People don't know about the shadow government, the dark web. People don't know about the basement of the Vatican. You know, there's a lot of things. And those are not conspiracy theories. They're not. If you can YouTube it and find a picture, a video, a clip, it's not a conspiracy theory. <laughs> uh, so... You have classifications. Uh, I talked about this earlier. You have um, Joe Biden who represents Zionism. That is a classification of wealth and power. And then you have another group. You have Freemasonry, which is President Trump. And that's a classification of wealthy elite people. Same as if you were to say Beyonce and Shakira. Two different entities 
with a lot of wealth and power in different ways. Beyonce's is more into the urban. Shakira's is more into the um, eclectic, you know, world. So there's different realms. and diff But if you were to say who had the best record of the year, now you have a debate over, you know, you call it the Grammy or the Grammys, yeah, the Billboard Awards, American Music Awards. That's why they have so many different award shows so that you can spread out, you know, that way you don't have controversy between fans. Because you can easily manipulate a group of people by one artist duking it out over the other. Which is why you see uh, Cardi B versus Nicki Minaj in the beginning, or you saw um, Jennifer Lopez and Mariah Carey. But the funny thing about J-Lo and Mariah Carey at that time, that they were duking it out, they had the same management. So the manager was probably like, look, y'all, I'm going to make y'all need some publicity. Y'all yeah, need to fight with each other. Okay? I don't care how it's going to work, but fight. And then you saw how Mariah went on American Idol. <laughs> and then Jennifer Lopez goes on American Idol. Same management. Same manager. These entities are not evil. I would say not evil to themselves. But uh, it's when you go deeper. Yes, the agenda does look like an agenda. But I, I, I honestly want to say we have no proof to the agenda. We only have evidence of, uh, of the dirty laundry that they forgot to fluff. You know, when allegations come out and then a whistleblower acknowledges it, that's when we can acclaim that, you know, something was deemed um, evil or against the human, uh, you know, patriot. Or the American Patriot, my bad. I talked a lot. I told my mom I call her eight thirty. What time is it? What time is it? Oh, it's eight thirty one. I had to call my mama. <laughs> but yeah, I wanted to just cover a lot of grounds that uh yeah, if you missed out, I did research uh Hunter Biden. <laughs> Oh, poor Hunter Biden. It is true. And Joe Biden lied. See, and Trump was telling the truth, but nobody would pay attention because his mouth was running too much tonight. If he had just shut up, and I tell Mr. T, like in my mind, I'm like, Mr. T, shut up. Shut up. Shut up. All the time. Like, shut up. If he would just shut up. Just shut up. In, in times of like, He's so articulate, and that's the problem. That that I, I relate, because I'm so articulate, and I have a big mouth at the same time. My mouth gets me in so much trouble, but I'm learning how to play fair. You know, it's the end of the world, <laughs> as we know it. Um. Anyways, I hope you guys are doing well. Uh, thank you for tuning in to this live stream after debates part one. We got two more to go. I don't know if I can handle the other two. I almost had a, a, a panic attack. I was like, oh, I don't smoke cigarettes. I feel like I need to have a cigarette right now. I got my anxiety child. I'm like, oh, oh, goodness gracious. But I think the in the conclusion of the debate was a train wreck on purpose. It's a stage and narrative to make everybody go, damn, did y'all see that? They both messed up. And that is the way to equal the plane. It's the way to equal the ground. So probably Joe will get points next week on Wednesday. Trump will probably get his points on the debate after. So that it leaves everybody with that. And we're in Libra, aren't we? No, we're in, are we in Libra? I'm sure we're in the Zodiac Libra. No, we're in Virgo. I can't remember, shoot. I always get Virgo and Libra like mixed up but the scales of libra is when we make decisions right and then you go into scorpio which is more of a uh, uh lock it in it's it's tight jesse what would, what did you guess about it's is it leap is it libra season oh yeah that's right because your birthday was um last week Oh, Joanne, you missed the comment about mental health professionals. He said, let me go back. Um, oh, Lord, that's way up there. Uh, 
Oh, I'm reading. Okay. Yeah, Joanne, you got to go back in the comments and look. Gosh darn it, Joanne, pay attention. <laughs> but I came up with the group Red Pill Society. There was a lot of people who caught on to it, but as soon as Elon Musk said, uh, if people knew what's best for them, they would take the red pill. I was like, oh, that's me and other people that I know. So let's look up Elon Musk really quick before I go. Because it's really important that you got, this is the thing that people who are these celebrities, even politicians with big names, they're celebrities, they're, they're big names. They all have a responsibility and a role, just like us. Like I have a role right now, like everyone's paying attention to what I'm saying. So it, I have a responsibility to make sure that because I'm a, um, I'm, I portray an unbiased dance teacher, I have to make sure that my words are very articulated in a way that I'm not telling people what to think. I'm just giving, I'm giving a, a, a wisd words of wisdom, you know, because that's what we teachers do. Okay, Elon, red pill, and then we'll close out. Du -du 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 -du. Okay. So Tesla owner Elon Musk, whose child's name is jacked up. You guys see his baby's name? It's called... <laughs> Elon Musk tweets, take the red pill in another strange turn for a billionaire. So what it means is research, do your homework, don't look at the surface of things, look beneath it. So like, let's say that there's a piece of cake, you know, you don't just go, oh, I don't like chocolate. I'm not going to eat it. No, it's like, you don't even know what, how it's going to taste. So if you really want to know how to make a, a valid decision about something, you would do a background check on information. And there's too much of this chastising people, calling people names. And even by just making fun of Trump, it only allows and enables you to make fun of other people too. So this is why I don't make fun of people. I make fun of what people do. <laughs> some people make some, people do some stupid things. But if I, were, if I were everyone in your position, I would say if things are not, Things are portrayed in a bad way now because of words, okay? When you see the numbers of coronavirus, it looks bad because of what is being said and the, and the documentation of, well, not the documentation, the, the, the visual presentation of the numbers. But if you actually look at how many numbers globally have people have been a case and you look at how many people died from specifically the virus, it's not true. Um, SARS-CoV-2 is not a, um, it's not an individualized, uh, killer virus, uh, or else there wouldn't be a Middle East because it's a Middle East virus. And even if it's a Middle East virus, how the hell did China get the information? <laughs> That's a red pill, you know, situation where you like, how did it get from Middle East to a lab in China? And then it released itself and then it killed... The person who figured it out, if you guys didn't know, and then it spiraled around the world. But then I always tie people are not gonna get they they not gonna like me. I'm gonna lose a lot of friends tonight. But you look at when Trump said we need to build a wall, and it had nothing to do with immigration and hating you know people of Mexican descent. It it was probably because he had he known that there's probably gonna be a plague of some sort. You know you never know. And there's there's actually a movie on Amazon. I is it called Parasite? Virus? I forgot what it's called. But it, it's about this immigrant who came from a Pacific Islander uh 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 country and he was sick and he was uh he what do you call it? He stole away and uh when he all the people in the stowaway container, they all died. And so when they all died, it created this nasty bacteria and only one person survived. So he's walking around town and he's coughing on people and then the whole town gets sick. And then like people were dying from this virus. And, and so that's the whole thing. And I'm just like, that's kind of like, you know, if you knew that there was going to be a virus and you want to build a wall to narrow down the curve, that would make sense in my world. Because I think logically, I don't think about, 
well, that was racist. The only thing I take racist is when people use someone's ethnic background for a validation of their own ethics. Like, I will never, ever, ever dare say, I wouldn't have gotten jobs because I'm black. You know, or, you know, I, my success as a dance teacher came because, you know, my blood. I would never say that. So when, when Biden, I'm sorry, I, I'm not supposed to say his name. Don't cut me off again. Don't cut me off. <laughs> so if you guys didn't know, it was a whistleblown two weeks ago that Wuhan was experimenting on creating a vaccine, allegedly, that would prevent SARS-CoV-2 in the Middle East. But all they had to do really was just not make missiles in NATO. And didn't they terminate that on Sunday? They had an um, international day of taking down the missiles in NATO. And this is what Trump promised, the first thing he promised in his third debate with Hillary. Because they said, that's where my vote leaned one way than the other. Don't get mad at me. I'm just telling the truth. And I'm going to, I have to stand for my own truth. And the truth is, Hillary said, we're still working on that. We're still trying to make a decision on what we're going to do with, you know, the Middle East and NATO. Trump's like, we don't need 300 missiles. We don't need to do research on chemical, biochemical weapons. We don't need nuclear weapons sitting in the ground in the Middle East. There's no point. And so I was like, there's a valid fact, but damn, why'd it have to come from him? Damn, right? So... I always just go for the information versus my own personal feelings against a particular race color. Because all white people are going to have some issue. <laughs> Biden has issues too. Everyone has issues. But y'all, let me tell you, the worst person, uh, the worst person that's this color <laughs> that I experienced was my math teacher in sixth grade. Oh my gosh. I won't even say his name because I want to respect him because we have forgiven and moved on. But he was an awful math teacher. There was one day he sent every person of a cultural background out of the room because we were loud. It's both our faults. Now I look at it as a mature adult. He was wrong for, you know, saying shut up and no one shut up and he kicked everyone out. He, first was me. Aaron, get out. Because I instigated everybody. I was so bad in sixth grade. <laughs> I was so bad. I was the chocolate Dennis the Menace. But you know why? Because I was a perfect student. I had my, my clothes tight. My mom used to put on my clothes as a kid. And I used to get made fun of a lot. And so I started to realize that everybody who was being bad were cool. People who were, you know, spitting uh, hockey loogies. Remember those hockey loogies, spit walks in the teacher's hair? I thought it was funny. I tried to be one of those people and I, and I did a great job at it. Oh, I, I, I was a troublemaker till ninth grade where um, my anger management elevated. People found out I had uh, child abuse situations in my home, uh, not for my mama, but um, family member, we forgiven situation is healed. It's already buried as a hatchet, but every, it's already known. Everyone who knows my family knows the situation. And the way it came out was kind of embarrassing because a, um, you know, a child thinks it's normal that they did something wrong and be a mom who works full time, you know, doesn't really see what's happening. So how could a mom know what's going on? Bye. I better go too. I'm talking too much. But yes, follow your own instinct. Follow your gut instinct. All right, everybody. I'll talk to you later. Good night. Peace out. Deuces.